This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special, special guest today is a talented singer currently based in Boston, Massachusetts. Her name is Taylor Deneen. Miss Deneen, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for joining the Bring Back Soul yeah. Music Podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm very no excited. <laughs> you have, uh, I guess, a couple new singles out. Um, one, the one I got was on, was called Ready. And yes. I we're gonna talk about all that. Uh, and I love that song. Also another one I believe um that you released maybe earlier this summer called Running. Yeah, Running was on Juneteenth. Yeah. Juneteenth. Okay. Uh, you have a very interesting story and um we're gonna get right into it. Um why don't you tell us a little bit more about Taylor Denise? All right. So um I'm from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I started singing when I was about maybe five or six years old, grew up in the church. Um, I came from a kind of a halfway musical family, mainly on my mom's side. And um, so I started singing in the church, doing, you know, choir, solo type stuff with the family. And eventually I got into singing in school, public school choirs. Um, when I was 10, my dad brought home a clarinet. A year later, I started playing the saxophone. I've been playing that for a while now. Kind of got into piano a little bit. And just all throughout high school, I started gigging and doing performances and started writing in studios. And eventually, I ended up auditioning for Berkeley College of Music um, when I was 17 and ended up getting a full ride there. So I graduated from high school, moved to Boston, and now I'm currently based here where I'm trying to finish up my bachelor's degree at the end of this year in contemporary writing and production and professional music. So it's kind of a mix. I've been all over the place. Um, I traveled a lot in high school, um, mainly performing classical and, and jazz music. But I guess my more contemporary side of R&B, soul came from my family's influences and the church and some of that stuff. So that's kind of where my original sound came from, more, more or less from not so the classical side, but um, contemporary styles. Okay. Um, now, you mentioned, you said that uh, your family, I think you said semi in the business what what does that mean semi um not necessarily in the business but um i know my family had some church groups uh, i grew up in the church of christ so they traveled a lot performing in some of their acapella singing groups um one of my uncles was in a male all male chorus united male chorus it's known a lot predominantly in the south and um i have some cousins that tried to do singing a little bit as a career and kind of eventually that faded out a little bit. <clears throat> okay. Did you, mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like, um, like from an early age, you, you kind of knew what you wanted to do. I will say kind of music has always been a part of what I wanted to do, but I didn't actually want to make a career out of it until I was about halfway through high school. It was always just kind of a hobby for me. Originally, my plan was to go to medical school and I wanted to study oncology or either go to dental school or something like that. But it kind of took me trying to convince my parents on letting me pursue music as a career because they always wanted me to have the either medical or law degree. And yeah, they kind of were going for more of that professional mindset. And it was about the end of my junior year when I told them, that I really wanted to pursue music as a career. And I was thinking about the school Berkeley. 
Okay. Do you have uh, Do you have siblings uh, who do music as well? Are you the Are you the only one? I have one sibling, and my older brother. We've sung together a few times in community talent shows back home and uh, at church. Sometimes we they give us the solo where we duet together, but um, he never pursued music in a professional sense. It was just kind of something that he did because I did. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, now you said you're a student at, at, at Berkeley. Is it, is it Berkeley School of Music or Berkeley? What is it? How was the title? Berkeley College of Music. Berkeley College of Music mm-hmm. in Boston. And yeah. I've had a couple of friends who've, uh, who've gone there. Um, and so you said your major is, you said composition? So I actually have two majors too. I'm in a dual degree program. So my first major is professional music and that is kind of a mix of a variety of fields. So mine is performance, so vocal performance and songwriting. And my other major is contemporary writing and production. And that's why I learned how to do more um, um, pre-production for songs and mixing and things like that. So that's kind of how I got into songwriting and putting out original music. <clears throat> okay. Now uh, I mentioned that uh, Ready um, is the information that I got as well as uh, running. But mm-hmm. um, you also um, released a song, I think I read in 2018 called, it was it Bold? Yes. So I actually wrote Bold back in high school at the first recording studio. I started working in as kind of a mentee and um, I didn't put it out until 2018 which was the end of my first year of college and it's kind of like a heavy hip-hop R&B type of vibe but since then I really shifted into more of a neo soul real soulful jazzy type of vibe for my music I love it by the way Um, let me ask you before we talk about that um, who were some of your influences growing up because I can hear you know, several different people in your music. Um, when I first heard it, I think Natalie Cole um, and some others. But who did you who did you um, who did you look up to or who did you um, listen to uh, growing up? Um, I would first um, say or when it comes to jazz, I listen to a lot of Ella Fitzgerald and Sarah Vaughn. Um, R&B, Soul, um, Aretha Franklin, John Legend, Neo Soul, Wendy Ari, D'Angelo, Erica Badu, and a lot of um, funk black artists, so like Rufus, Shaka Khan, P-Funk, Parliament, um, Gap Band, so a lot of the old school, <laughs> old school black music. So a different array of different, uh, different kinds of music, too. Um, mm-hmm. All right. And so Taylor, um, Ready, um, let's kind of break that down a little bit. Tell me a little bit more about, about Ready. So I got the inspiration to write Ready after being affected. I, and I was scrolling on social media and I just saw all of the info about, you know, the Breonna Taylor story. And just with me being a Black woman personally, I felt deeply affected by that and just saw the hashtag you know arrest the killers that killed Breonna Taylor and I followed that heavily and you know signed petitions donated to organizations and I just felt like I wanted to do more personally not just for her but just for the other black victims and just the marginalized and just people that felt like you know we've been beaten down so much and i feel like the only way sometimes i feel like i can do anything is through my my art and my voice so i wanted to create a message for for everybody saying you know we need to do better we need to stand up you know stand up like our ancestors did keep fighting and hold on and that was really just something that i really hoped could bring people together a little bit more and just take these things a little bit seriously. And I thought it would hit heavy, especially coming from a younger person of the younger generation and just saying that, you know, we we hear things, we're listening and we're aware of what's going on and we just need to do better as young people, you know? I agree. And um, you you mentioned young people. I really have to commend um, um, the younger um, people like yourself and 
you know, other college students, because they're keeping they're keeping it alive with all the protests. And I think sometimes, um, you know, things sort of hit. They stay for, you know, seem like a day or two or whatever, and then people forget about it. But, you know, the young people have been keeping it, keeping it live, keeping the conversation going. And it's not just, um, you know, African-Americans, but it's, you know, people from all walks of life who are all different backgrounds who are coming together saying this is, you know, enough is enough. So, um, you know, congratulations on that. Have you always been uh, so socially conscious? conscious? I would say I've performed for certain organizations that were socially conscious and a part of social movements. But as I've gotten older, I've started to look at it a different way. And as an artist, I've realized that I have a voice and I'm able to bring about change and power and just spread messages with my music. So I would say in the past year or two, I've started to look at my art and my music in a different type of light to be more socially conscious for people. Okay. And how long did it take you to, um, to write uh, Ready? It actually took me about five days. Um, well, because I wrote and produced it. So the music and the lyrics, the melody and the lyrics instantly came to me um, in the first day. But I just kind of sat at my piano and kind of picked at it a while to bring about that. It's very powerful musically. Um, I sat at the piano and tried to compose something that would bring about a lot of emotion. Um, and that would really make people feel it. But the melody and the lyrics came to me within the first day, I'd say. Okay. Um, well, I, I, I love it. Congratulations on that. Now, I mentioned earlier this summer, you released um, another song called Running. Mm -hmm. um, before we get into that, though, is are you trying to release music every month or every other month or every few months with this pandemic going on or... Um, What's going on musically? Work. I guess what I'm trying to say is, um, can we expect more music from you coming up? Um, I would say in, in 2021, um, I would like to release my first EP. Um, well, it's so much music, it may end up being a, a full LP. But um, there may be a single or two um, starting in January. So... Um, while and for the rest of 2020, I don't really plan on having anything released unless it's a surprise job. I have been doing a few collaborations with other people and depending on when they choose to release um, those projects, they or may not see something new from me. <laughs> um, so tell us about Renan. I, I listened to that before we went on and uh, I like that too. Uh, so tell us about tell us about Renan. Um, running was just something, something catchy that I wanted people to sing along to. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, we had, need to have our music with a message that um, pierces people's hearts and it's a serious note, but running was just something fun. And I released that in June because it was, you know, it was a lot of heavy hearts around the killing of um, George Floyd and just all that going on and just even being stuck in the house all the time. A lot of us had been in quarantine for months. I wanted to release something that would just be fun and uplifting for people. And the lyrics are catchy, you know, running back for more, running back for more, and you got me. And it's actually one of my favorite songs that I've ever written because just so many people like it. It's lighthearted, the melody's fun, and it's just really soulful to me. Yeah, most most definitely. Um, uh, let me ask you, when... Um What's your, what's your writing style? You say you just, I think you said you just sat down at the piano and started, you know, putting stuff together. I feel like my best songs come from when I sit down at the piano and I just kind of start piddling around, playing with chords. And then sometimes I will open up because I do a lot of production. So sometimes I might, you know, open up Logic Pro or something and start making a beat. 
And then if the beat, if I feel like I've got something going, then I might start, you know, making some melodies or ad-libbing over the top of it. And then some lyrics will come out. And then, you know, maybe in a few minutes, I end up having a song or something. So it, it usually starts with the music first. Yeah, okay. for me. All right. Um, well, yeah, congratulations. Both of those songs, I think, are hot. Um, I you. know Running came out. You said, I think you said Juneteenth before. Mm -hmm. um, how has that been received? And are, are you a um, are you an, just a independent artist? Are you signed to a label or how does that work? Yes. So I'm I'm still an independent artist. My goal is to hopefully get picked up um, by a label in the future after you know I do my album release and things of that nature. And once I start gigging and performing live again, um, but um i'm sorry what was the what was the previous your previous question um, i was saying your writing pro uh, we covered your writing process mm -hmm. um but i can't i think you addressed it <laughs> <laughs> you addressed it um so you know we talked about 2020 it's been just brutal mm -hmm. or yeah did yeah. you have um and i know you're still a student but did you have a big 2020 plan because i read your bio and you perform with a lot of, um, you know, major artists or inform in front of major artists. Did you have a big 2020 plan before uh, quarantine hit? It's crazy because going into 2020, my goal was to actually start releasing more music. And I had wanted to actually um, release my first album this year, but I've kind of pushed things back. But um, yeah, that was mainly my goal for this year was to focus more on writing and producing and just developing my sound as an artist and creating content that was real to me. And just I had no idea we'd be going into quarantine and we'd have I just have all this time to actually sit and dedicate um, time to doing that. So it has been a crazy year, but I'm grateful for the time that I've been given to write more content and just more content that makes me aware of what's going on and helps other people. Okay. Do you, um, because of quarantine, are you active in uh, social media realm? I mean, are you doing uh, Instagram or Facebook live or any of those? those uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, I actually started doing um, Instagram lives at the end of March, I believe it was the last week. I did a little short series of Instagram and Facebook live concerts. And I actually did one for Boston.com and Boston Globe back in April. So that was fun. I did a couple of uh, original tunes and some jazz covers that people had voted on. So that was fun. And and this month, I'm actually going to be starting up a video series on my Instagram and YouTube page, um, doing some popular covers and maybe even sharing some new original music and doing some collaborations with local musicians around here. Okay. Um, yeah, I think if, um, you know, if there's a silver lining in 2020, particularly for musicians that uh, mm -hmm. you can get involved in different ways to get to get your to get your music out there so i think that's great um let me ask you because you're from oklahoma city um mm -hmm. and now you're based in boston yes. um what's the music scene like and in, in both but especially like in boston um it's such a mix um i'm heavily involved in kind of the r b neo soul and jazz scene um, Boston is heavy, heavy in jazz. Um, there are a few R&B artists here, um, but it's also heavy in kind of like a singer songwriter folk genre as well. And back in Oklahoma City, it's um, the black music scene is heavily based in jazz a lot. So that's where I get a lot of my influence from that. Okay. Um, well, I definitely can hear it in your music as well. Um, <laughs> which is, like I said, great. Um, so let's talk about some of your performances. Um, um, who have you performed in front of or with? Or tell us a little bit more about Taylor Dean, the, the live singer. <laughs> so um, I would say I didn't meet my first, you know, 
celebrity that I considered big time until maybe I was about 16 or 17 when I got to sing in front of Andrew Day. Um, I got to go backstage for my birthday to one of her concerts and um, she introduced me to her and just her band and I told her I was getting ready to go to Berkeley or actually no I told her I was getting ready to audition for Berkeley and she wanted to hear my audition <laughs> so I got to sing a little bit for her and once I got to Berkeley it's just so crazy the network of musicians and performance opportunities up here is crazy um, I was not expecting to be performing in front of Missy Elliott or Sylvia Rohn of Epic Records and working with Rob Lewis, who's the music director for Christina Aguilera and Tony Braxton. And I got to do all of that um, by my sophomore year. Junior year, I got to sing background vocals with Dee Dee Bridgewater, who's a phenomenal jazz artist. and. Um, working with instructors that have performed and toured with Shaka Khan and Roberta Flack. So all of these, I would say all of the big time performance opportunities really came once I moved out to Boston and started doing a lot with Berkeley and just kind of making connections with so many people um, in that in that community there. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've heard that um, the alumni network is incredible. Uh, yeah at Berkeley. Um, so I guess take advantage of that. And, uh, you know, what I heard, I have a buddy who went there years ago before you, and he said it's amazing how many former students and even artists come in just to hang out and to yeah. listen to music and play music with the students. And he was, uh, I think he said he sat down with, um, I think he said Bill Weathers just sat down next to him and just listened to him play. And he said he was just really intimidated by it. But he said, but that's what happens at, at Berkeley. You know, people come back just on a whim and start hanging out with the students. So definitely sure. it's, it's really crazy. Like um, sometimes, you know, Jill Scott will just drop in <laughs> just on a random day or LL Cool J will see him in the bookstore or Esperanza Spalding will just be sitting in the back of a concert and you not even know until the end when she comes downstairs and it's just it's really cool and just of course you know they give their words of wisdom and it's really inspiring because you know a lot of those people are alumni like Layla Hathaway we get to see and it's just it's really encouraging and gives us hope because it's just like they were students just like us and you know that could be us in the future okay so. just curious uh you know being from and i know people attend berkeley from all over the all over the world really um how did you get your um for those who may want to follow in your footsteps and go to berkeley how did you um get the uh you said you had to try out or audition for Berkeley. How did all that yeah. come about? So I actually was thinking about going to one of their summer camps. They offer five week summer programs and you know vocal summer camps that are based off whatever instrument you want to. So honestly, if you just go to you know www.berkeley.edu and just see some of their summer programs, if you, even if you just subscribe to their newsletter or their info, they instantly start sending you stuff about applying and auditioning and just their social media is very active in that as well. Um, once you start following them, they'll send you notifications about applying and auditions. And in America, they usually go to like major cities such as Dallas or, you know, LA, Atlanta. And they also, you know, they host auditions all over the world. So once you apply, you know, book an audition, they'll let you know if you're accepted or rejected. And, kind of you know it's a standard okay know. sounds like uh sounds like american idol yeah <laughs> a little bit minus all the videos and tv stuff right. okay go ahead and tell us where can people um pick up your music so my music is currently available on all streaming platforms. You can search me on Google, Spotify, Apple Music, Taylor Deneen. That's T-A-Y-L-O-R Deneen, D-E-N-E-E-N. -E -E and you can also check out my website, social media, www.taylordeneenmusic.com. 
Okay. And we'll have links to all of Taylor's uh, social media and her her website in the show notes and also on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Taylor, anything else you want to add? Um, I think that's it. Thank you for having me. Okay. Um, now you graduate June? May? I graduate in May. Mm-hmm. May. Okay. May. And um, so hopefully, um, you know, hopefully Corona is sort of, I don't know, calmed down, I guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and artists can get back quiet. out there <laughs> in time for summer. Um, is that is that what you want to do coming uh, going forward is to maybe tour a little bit or? Uh, yes. Yeah, so once I graduate in May, I'm going to stay in Boston for a little bit. I, I'm already with a general business gigging group. So we perform every weekend at weddings, corporate events, private parties all throughout um, New England. We actually went to New Hampshire and the Cape this past weekend. Our group is called Young Love and the Thrills. So I plan to stay and do a lot of performing with them over the next year or two. And my goal is to relocate to either, you know, Los Angeles or Atlanta, where the music scene is much bigger and hopefully get some touring and performing opportunities and see where things take me. All right. Well, Taylor, uh, keep us posted and uh, let us know if we can do anything to help you. Um, Yeah, I appreciate it. And good luck with everything, with school and, um, you know, the career and dropping hot singles. Uh, The EP is coming, you said, perhaps in 2021. Yes, Um, definitely. Okay. That's Taylor Deneen on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, and we'll be right back. Thank you. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Miss Taylor Deneen. You can find out more about Taylor on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. That's our show for today. I'm Todd Woodson. See you next week.